Good morning. Welcome to worship at the Salina First Presbyterian Church. We welcome those of you that are in our sanctuary, those listening to the radio broadcast on KINA 910 AM and 107.5, and those watching online video stream via Facebook or YouTube. If you are worshiping virtually and would like a copy of the bulletin to follow along, you may find it on the church's website, fpcsalina.org. Now, please rise as we say our opening sentences together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let us make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Let us be united as we worship our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer together. Our opening hymn is number 393. O oh, day of rest and gladness. God has given us a sign showing that love is stronger than death. The sign of the cross points to our exodus from bondage to sin. Let us repent and seek God's forgiveness and enter into new life with Christ. Please join me in the prayer of confession as it's found in your bulletins. Holy One, whose love and justice condemn us, whose mercy and kindness feed us, we confess our sins and pray for your forgiveness. What terrible suffering we have unleashed. We have used other persons without regard for their dignity. We have abused the earth without care for its beauty or concern for future life. We have sought to bargain with you to smooth our way to heaven. God, change us. Put the spirit of Christ within us and cause us to grow 
into mature, faithful disciples of the one who came from you to save us from our sin. Free us from captivity to our selfishness. Bind us to the whole body of Christ. And let us bear witness to the truth that your love holds everything together in perfect unity. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, this water, which represents the love of Christ, also represents that which binds us all together with God and with one another as children of God and as siblings of one another. Know that you are loved. Know that you are forgiven through Jesus Christ our Lord and be at peace. Hallelujah and amen. like to invite any children or children at heart down for our time with the children this morning. Thank you, and good morning, children. <laughs> and good morning to our children who might be tuning in this morning on Facebook or later on YouTube. So we, uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about uh, what brings us together. And so um, I have with me a couple things, and I hope Jesse can zoom in. So you guys can, can you guys tell everybody here what I've got here? Bricks. Okay. And so if I were to pull these bricks as hard as I could, would they come apart? Not with my strength, no. Um, why? Sorry? They're cemented together, right? So what about this brick here? It's got cement on it. Is it doing its job? No? Why not? It's not sticking to anything. There's not another brick. So I wanted to use this illustration today to show what is our job, our call as Christians. This glue, this cement, what holds us together is the love of Christ. It's the love of Jesus for each and every one of us. And each and every one of us is promised that. We can have this love together, just like this brick right here that's covered in this mortar, this cement. That's the love of Christ. But our call isn't just to be a brick with mortar on it. Our call is to be joined together. Each and every person in the sanctuary, tuning in on the radio, our friends that aren't able to be worshiping with us today, our call, our jobs as Christians is to be bound together tightly by the love of Christ that binds everything together with God and all of us together as siblings in Christ. So I want you guys to remember this image. We can be Christians, but we can't be real Christians if we're not bound together. So if this mortar was wet... I'd put these two together, and then all of a sudden, we'd be doing our jobs better. So think of yourselves as bricks, the love of Christ as the mortar or the cement between them that brings us together so we can do our jobs, to love one another as Christ has loved us. Okay? Can we have a prayer together? Gracious God, we are grateful for your love. 
your love that you give to us, even though we haven't done anything to earn it or deserve it, we thank you and we love you. And so we listen to your call to be thankful and we listen to your call to love one another as you have loved us. And so God, help us to remember that you are the force that brings us together and that no force should drive us apart. Help us to remember that we need one another in order to fulfill the call that you have given to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> Let us pray. Creator of unity, body of spirit, spirit of community, bind us together around your word and send us out to do your justice, show your mercy, and embody your redeeming love, glorifying you, Holy Trinity. Amen. The scripture reading today is Psalm 27. Listen now for God's word to you through these words of the psalmist. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? What evildoers assail me to devour my flesh? my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for he will hide me in his shelter in day of trouble he will conceal me under the cover of his tent he will set me high on a rock now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on the level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Just when you thought it was safe to come back into the sanctuary, here I am again addressing everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe. Anyway, uh, this morning's anthem, one, is um, the product of uh, a reaction I had last January, uh, specifically on January 6th, as I watched, uh, like most of us, uh, and was shocked and dismayed and disheartened at seeing what was going down in our nation's capital. This isn't a political statement, but I think it's safe to say that regardless of where you are politically, to watch that kind of a thing happening in the United States was all of those things. Um, as I was watching this, the opening chord progression that you're about to hear uh, started seeping into my head. I'm not sure why these things happen to all of us. Um, maybe not with, through music, but through various means. And uh, the cello line also came into play, and before I knew it, I was at the piano and working on uh, setting this text that has always been important to me. It's one of my favorite hymns, um, setting this text to music and sort of giving you my own version of it. So what you're about to hear, one uh, composition written in, in uh, reaction to January 6th, and also just a reminder to all of us that we are, in fact, one in the Lord. Thank 
you all for sharing that with us in worship this morning. So this morning we'll continue our sermon series following the lectionary through the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians. And uh, last Sunday I teased this Sunday's scripture saying that the first word in today's scripture would be therefore. So the writer of Ephesians is going to take all that has been said this far in the first three chapters, important words about how the love of Christ gives us an inheritance as children of God how the love of Christ makes a peace that bridges all divides and creates one new humanity, and how the love of Christ roots and grounds us so that we can grow and respond to God's call. The writer of Ephesians takes all of these things, all of these claims, and tells the hearers of the letter what to do with Christ's love in their time and place. And friends, for us, about 2,000 years later, it's just as important for us to hear this as well. This reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, which can be found in your pew Bibles on page 260 of the New Testament section in the back of the Bible. That's page 260. Listen for how God speaks to you through these words of Scripture. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who ascended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts that Christ gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. O God, our loving parent, we are your children. Strengthen our bonds as your children and as siblings to one another, as we mature in our faith and our lives. As your word provides us with instruction this morning, open our eyes, ears, minds, and hearts that we might better see, hear, understand, and feel your will for us. And guide our mouths, hands, feet, and hearts that our words, actions, and relationships might reflect your will for us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So when the letter to the people in Ephesus was first read, people didn't read it in chunks on Sundays with a week in between like we've been doing it. I want to be sure that you're right there on the edge of your seats with the people in Ephesus when you get to that therefore at the beginning of chapter 4. So 
I want to briefly recap again in just a couple of sentences the three sermons that we've had leading up to this. Three weeks ago, Ewan preached about the first chapter of Ephesians, about the inheritance that we can all claim as children of God, an inheritance from God through Jesus Christ that not only makes us children of God, but makes us siblings of one another. A couple of weeks ago, I preached about the peace of Christ that reconciles us all together into a new identity that cuts through any division, that when we say, may the peace of Christ be with you, we are saying and acknowledging that Christ's peace breaks down any differences that seek to divide us. And last week, I preached about drawing more of the love of Christ through our roots so that we can grow and be strengthened as we are rooted and grounded in love. And when we do this, God can do abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine within us. Our adoption as children of God and siblings of one another, our peace that brings about a new humanity that bridges any divides, and our process of being rooted and grounded all have one thing in common, and that is the love of God through Jesus Christ. The writer of Ephesians has taken the time to say, this is what it's all about, and now the writer pivots and says, this is what you are to do with it as a community of faith. And the writer starts out by saying, I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. No pressure. But there's one nuance to this phrase that gets lost in the NRSV, and if If folks would just be comfortable saying the word y'all, like I am, we wouldn't have this problem. The writer is really saying, I beg y'all to lead a life worthy of the calling to which y'all have been called. Even as I typed this, Microsoft Word was putting that red squiggly line under y'all, trying to get me to change it. The point is this, the calling that we have is not just for us individually. It's for us as a community. The rest of today's scripture rests on this principle, that it is our call as a community. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help y'all to hear this too, as it applies to this church. So how is a church worthy of its calling? Ephesians 4, 2 starts to answer that by saying that we are to be humble, we are to be gentle, We are to be patient. And that shouldn't be hard. We see plenty of examples of this in the media, right? Of course I kid. In a country that largely does lack unity and lacks empathy and and lacks, or always seeks, rather, instant gratification above all else, humility and gentleness and patience are lacking. And in this way, the church is still very much called to be a counter-cultural place. We are called to be united in Christ, something that already is a reality that we are called to live into and not fight against. We are called to bear one another's burdens, thereby being gentle as we build an empathy with one another. We're called to grow over time as the Spirit causes us to grow, being patient rather than seeking the quick fix. We are members of one body and one spirit, with one hope in our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And in a time when the media, whether it's left or right or otherwise, makes a profit by feeding us a constant diet, contrary to humility and gentleness and patience, it's easy to feel a disconnect or a pushback with the scripture. But this is the challenge to which we are called if we are able to lead a life worthy of that calling. In a commentary on this scripture, Episcopal Bishop Paul Marshall challenges churches with this question. As churches work toward or around the realization of the unity that God has created, the question repeatedly arises, which of our own preferences do we value more highly than the experience of God-given unity? To what degree do we desire less unity than God intends? 
In the children's time a moment ago, I showed a metaphor for unity with these bricks and the mortar between them. When without mortar, when two bricks are stacked on one another, they just separate when you pull them. But with the mortar, they stick together. And those bricks represent us. The bricks that I had earlier, they look the same, but the us as bricks are represented in different colors, whether we're black or white or whether we're red or blue or whether we are old or young bricks. So many of the differences don't, don't matter as long as that love of Christ, that mortar is between us. That mortar, that love of Christ is what the writer of Ephesians has been talking about all along. And yet there are things, whether chipping away at us or causing us not to want to be joined together, that are present. What are those things that might be chipping away at the mortar at this church? And are we willing to follow God's call to talk about that, to speak the truth in love with humility and gentleness and patience, leading a life as a church worthy of God's calling. You need each other. If each person here is a brick and you, cl and you claim yourself to be a beloved child of God covered in that mortar and yet you're not attached to other bricks, you're not living out your calling. Every person here, every person that has been here, every person that will ever be here has been given grace through Jesus Christ. With that grace come gifts, as the author of Ephesians described. You each have unique gifts. Not one of you has all of the gifts and can do it on your own. You need each other. You need to stick to one another to live out your calling. You need to share your gifts in order to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And while this brick metaphor is maybe a helpful start to our thinking, it falls a bit short because of the, la the last part of this scripture. See, bricks can't grow, and they can't grow together. This beautiful building that we are in is static. It's unchanging. It does, the walls of this church don't grow you call to a different kind of a building, one that is dynamic and growing. To recall our sermon from last week, it's more organic. Just as our roots grow by holding the water that is the love of Christ, and we are rooted and grounded in that love, we also grow together with our roots intertwined as we all reach down to that same source of water, that baptismal water, the love of God through Jesus Christ. And we each individually grow into Christ, growing the unique gifts that have been given to each of us through Christ's grace. But Christ is the head of the church, the body of Christ. By growing into Christ, we are also growing into Christ's body together. It brings us together. It unites our unique gifts. And when each part of the body, unique as it may be, functions as Christ has called it to function, the whole body grows together. Listen again to the last two verses of our scripture this morning, Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. You're called to grow and to help each other to grow. You're called to a confidence that the love of God through Jesus Christ is there for you to sink your roots into, to receive the nourishment that causes growth for you individually as you strengthen the, the gifts that Christ has graciously given you. And you're called to help others to do the same. And others are called to help you to do that as you till the soil for one another so that you can all more easily sink your roots deeply into Christ's love and you all can grow your gifts. In this way, you all grow together. You bring your gifts together and God does something special with them. That's a building that we can be proud of. That's building that comprises a life worthy of the calling to which you all, y'all, have been called. That's building that is dynamic, it's growing, it's active. We are proud of building as it is an active 
verb rather than a building as a static noun. So what does this look like practically? I believe it looks like placing value on faith formation for all ages. There's a new program that will start at this church in September that will provide opportunities for everyone to do just that. The new Follow Me program is for everyone here with opportunities for folks from two years old to 122 years old and in special events where all ages are brought together. It integrates faith formation and worship and service and community building activities. It's all centered on what it means to answer Jesus when he says, follow me. All ages will discuss the same faith practices at the same time, which can lead to all growing together. Won't you consider investing of your time, of your growth, into this new Follow Me program by attending the discussions or the classes, by attending the community meals or worship, service projects, or volunteering to help? That's one big way that you can be siblings of Christ, united by Christ's peace, as you each sink your roots deeper into Christ's love and till the ground for your siblings to do the same. It's one way that you, beloved children of God, will be able to grow in your gifts and help others to do the same. And then God will be that mortar. Jesus Christ will be that mortar that brings it together into something abundantly far more than all you can ask or imagine. Whether it's through follow me or some other means, that's my prayer for this church. Grow together. Sierra read from Psalm 27 earlier, and it's a psalm that shows great confidence in God's providence over anything that causes fear, over fear itself. Be confident that God will cause unity, peace, and the deepening of your roots if you let God do it. Be confident that you are joined together as siblings in Christ, able to face any challenge that is put before you. Do the work of growth. Be patient for the growth with humility and gentleness. Trust in God. And as the psalmist closes, so I close this morning as well. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your hearts take courage. Wait for the Lord. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Having heard God's word read and proclaimed through scripture and sermon and song, I invite us to rise as we say what we believe together using words from our book of confessions, a brief statement of faith. What do we believe? We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and in ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage, loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. Amen. You may be seated. I want to remind all of you about the uh, friendship pads that are at the end of the Uh, pews. 
Will you please sign those and pass them on to your neighbors? When we give of ourselves to God, our hearts are changed for good. Therefore, let us return a portion of the time, talents, and treasures God has given us for the sake of our transformation and the transformation of the world. You are invited to partner in God's work through this church by placing a gift in the offering plates in the back of the sanctuary as you exit this morning. And now, let us stand and praise God for the blessings of our life with our doxology. Trinity, your love creates us, your passion saves us from sin, and your power transfigures us into glory for you. Thank you for giving us a place in your good creation, for giving us the bread of heaven to free us from slavery to sin and death, and for filling us with the holy light of the gospel for the building up of Christ's body and love. We present offerings to praise you and to help in the service of the church. Accept them as an outward sign as of our joyful discipleship in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Eucharist hymn is number 530, One Bread, one body.
Amen. You may be seated. Before we proceed, I want to ensure that everyone has one of these bags containing communion elements. If anyone does not have one, please raise your hand, and I'll ask our ushers to please bring the elements to you. Don't be shy if you don't have them. We want all to partake. Prior to communion, I'd also like to express some quick joys and concerns with you. First, please be in prayer for Hannah and Danielle Peckham as they depart later on today for the Presbytery of Northern Kansas Youth Work Camp at the Heartland Center near Kansas City. Hannah and Danielle will be part of about 30 youth from across the Presbytery participating in this week of faith-filled service and fun. So please be in prayer for the Peckham girls. We also wish Margaret and Bruce Wyatt a happy anniversary tomorrow. They'll celebrate their 52nd wedding anniversary. And we wish Ruth Lamphers a happy 92nd birthday this coming Wednesday as well. And the flowers in our chancel area this morning are given by two sets of folks. Uh, first, Alice and Frank Herman. We wish them a happy anniversary as well. Good to see you all. Happy anniversary to you. And I'm also grateful uh, to the 2017 Associate Pastor Nominating Committee. I see Mary back there. So thanks to Mary Anderson and Kathleen Putzier and Becky McGuffey, Ashley Jarvis, Andy Hayes uh, for the flowers given in my honor and, and, and appreciation for my ministry. But if I can just say, since I first met Mary and the APNC uh, four years ago, it's been my honor and privilege to get to know and serve with you all as well. So thank you for the flowers. And now let us prepare our hearts for the invitation to the Lord's table. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, strong and faithful God. All your works, the height and the depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your word summoned light. Night withdrew and creation dawned. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth and life appeared. When the times at last had ripened and the earth grown in full abundance, you created in your image man and woman, the stewards of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that all the living might find a voice to sing your praise and to celebrate the creation you call good. So now, with all the powers of heaven and earth, we sing the ageless hymn of your glory, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own you embraced a people as your own and filled them with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them, you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened his arms wide and surrendered his spirit. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, O God of creation. He broke the bread among his disciples and gave it to them and said, take this all of you, eat it. This is my body, given for you. And when the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples 
and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We commemorate Jesus, your son. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in a spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of creation. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. And then at last, all peoples will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation, we will sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior has taught us, we also are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to take your bag and to open it and retrieve the communion elements that are sealed together. We will partake in the bread together and then in the cup together, and I'll pause between each for a moment of silent prayer. Friends, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. and the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. communion that is found in your bulletin. Gracious God, how can we thank you for such a gift? For you have met us, fed us, drawn us to you, and bound us to one another. Now send us out to share your love and proclaim our hope until Christ comes again. Amen. Please rise as we sing our sending hymn, number 734, Hope of the World. Everybody rise.
Friends, our journey through Ephesians will continue next week as we welcome the Reverend Janine Money Groney to our pulpit and also as we commission Teresa Cooper to service in Scotland as a young adult volunteer through the Peace USA Young Adult Volunteer Program. We hope you'll be with us this coming Sunday. Friends, let's put away our chisels and hammers. Let's put away whatever it is that drives us apart and instead trust in the mortar that is the love of God through Jesus Christ, the mortar that binds us together. Let's speak the truth in love with gentleness and humility and patience as we are being built together into Christ and as Christ's body, the church. Let us trust in the binding force of Christ's love over anything that seeks to divide us. And may we trust that when we do this, God will be able to do abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. As you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and always. Alleluia and amen.